Hey there friends, what's going on? It's Kodiak here, back for another Grounded Survival Guide video, and today we are talking about combat. How to survive in the backyard with nothing but yourself, your tools, and maybe a friend or two. Now we're going to touch upon all of the major hostile insects in the backyard and give you some strategies to defeat them. I know there are still a lot of casual players out there struggling to defeat some of the harder insects in the game, so hopefully these tips will break down everything you need to know so you can survive in the backyard. Now first things first, we have to talk about difficulty. If you're playing on the WoW difficulty, you're going to have to master most of the combat skills in the game. Enemies just hit way too hard. You're gonna get one shot by pretty much anything, especially if you're unarmored. And that's really the kicker. You need armor and weapons to get through this game. That's a given, everybody knows that. But where do you start? That's really the question. If you're new to the game, I highly recommend getting yourself an acorn shovel and getting the grub armor. We actually did a video on the channel showing you how to find grubs quickly. Quickly, so check that out because the grub armor is really good. It's got strong defense, it gives you a nice boost to your stamina, and it's an easy to access early tier of armor. Now you could get the acorn armor as well. I see a lot of people in the comment section always saying that acorn armor is good. I just personally like the grub armor. The acorn armor may offer you slightly better defense, but I'm running around a lot, I'm using a lot of my stamina, so I like the grub armor personally. Now, in terms of weapons, you need to figure out what works for you. You may enjoy the spears, which are faster, but don't have a lot of stun. Or you may be like me and you like the club type weapons, which are slower, but have a really great stun effect. I personally recommend if you're just starting out to go for the spiky sprig. That is a very easy two handed club to get, but then quickly working your way up to the ant club. A great way to get the ant club is to go over to the abandoned ant hill towards the oak tree on the northern part of the map kill the few soldier ants that are inside that anthill, and then you'll have everything you need to get a tier two weapon, and that's gonna carry you through most of the game. Now with your armor and your weapon in hands, it's time to dive into the combat, and this is where we're really gonna kick things off with a breakdown of fighting each insect. All right, so the first insect I wanna talk about is the ladybug. This is probably the lowest tier in terms of deadliness, but the ladybug parts can give you access to the ladybug armor, which is an incredible defensive set of gear. Now the ladybug doesn't have any fancy attacks. You can jump on it, you can get a few cheap hits in by jumping on top and smacking down on it. You can shoot it with a bow, but the real key to the ladybug is just watching that little tiny frontward charge. With most of the insects in the game, you wanna stay up in their face and move around in a circle, clockwise or counterclockwise around the insect. Now you will have to identify when the game is actually engaging with the player. Sometimes the AI is good, sometimes it's not. And that's when you're gonna have to shift from just attacking to attacking and blocking. There are two real methods to doing this. If you're moving in a circle and you're noticing that the ladybug can't hit you, you're good. Just keep wailing away. If you run out of stamina, wait for it to recharge and keep attacking. If the ladybug is tracked to you, if the AI is working, you're gonna have to shift and do a little bit of blocking, but don't worry, because blocking is really not that challenging. The ladybug has a very simple forward attack, clearly forecasted when it rears back just a little bit, and right before it does that, you're gonna wanna hit your block button, and that's going to allow you to score that perfect block right before the attack. If you don't get a perfect block, that's not the end of the world. The ladybug attacks don't do that much damage, but as always, if you're on the harder difficulties, you're gonna see a lot more damage coming through, even if you are blocking. Having something like the ant club or the mint mallet is really the key here because stunning all of these insects is going to give you free hits. I mean, four or five free hits before they even can re-engage. So that's why I highly recommend you get comfortable with the two-handed weapons in the game. But if you like the faster spears, things like that, you can just keep moving in a circle around the enemy. It's just a little more tedious. Now, next up, we have the stink bug. And this insect definitely takes it up a notch because there are two abilities you have to watch out for. The first is its stink spray. It'll basically rear back. You'll see the underside of it start to expand, and then it will release a huge puff of toxic whatever from its rear end. Now, the key to this one is just to back up or run to the side, basically get away. I have a tendency to just run a little bit further than I think I need to, because getting out of that toxic haze is really important. The insect is just going to follow you anyways, so there's no reason to stay in there, try and score a free hit, when it's just gonna follow you a few feet away. Now, of course, the second attack is just its basic attack. And if you thought the ladybug attack was easy to forecast, the stink bug rears up like 20 feet in the air and then strikes down. It's really easy to predict, 
but there is a little bit of jarringness to it. It's a quick attack, so getting in that perfect block is a little bit harder than with the Ladybug. Now, because of its size, I highly recommend you use blocking over sidestepping. You're just not going to be able to get around this insect the way that you were with the Ladybug, and as we'll talk about in the future with the Spider. It's just too big of an insect. So utilizing a weapon with stun as well as getting those perfect blocks in, and you will kill the Stink Bug every single time. All right, so next up we have the larva, and I really don't want to talk too much about these guys because they're really just freaky. They're not hard to kill. They don't really have that much of an attack power, but they are freaky, and that's really the biggest thing they have going for it, that ability to get inside your head, to skeeve you out, to make those creepy crawlies go across your body, and that's because they look menacing. They're low to the ground, they're covered in spikes, and they're usually in packs of four or more, and that's really the kicker here. It's strength in numbers, simple as that, and making sure that you are always in control of the combat is really the key. You never wanna put yourself in a position where you're gonna be backed into a corner or up against some sort of rock or tree or something like that, you always want to have the upper hand. Now taking on the larva is really simple if you have a stunned weapon. You can basically just swing it and you'll deal tons of damage and you'll be able to stun them every few hits and they're no big threat. Now if you have something like the spear, if you like the spear, it's going to be a little bit more challenging because they're constantly going to be in motion, but you can do it. Just try and get to a point where you're bottlenecking them so you only are fighting one or two at a time. You don't want to deal with an entire swarm of them because that's how you're going to die. So make sure you always have a plan B and an escape path and you will be just fine. Just just remember, larva, all bark, no bite. All right, so let's move on to some of the more challenging insects in the backyard. And that conversation starts with the bombardier beetle. This insect is really cool. I didn't actually know it existed until I picked up Grounded, but I'm pleasantly surprised with how interesting it is as an insect in the game. It's got two main attacks. It's got its basic attack, obviously a melee frontal attack, and it's got a ranged acid attack, and that's really the sticking point here. You have to identify when the bombardier beetle is about to shoot out its poison. It'll bring up the back end as if it's about to strike you like a scorpion would, and it'll shoot out a glob of this acid stuff. Now the acid stuff does a ton of damage and the key if you do get hit is just to move out incredibly quickly. You do not want to stand in that stuff. You don't want to fight the bombardier beetle in that stuff. You just need to move out and the bombardier beetle can use it in a melee area or in a ranged capacity. So you have to be constantly aware of that attack. It does look different than the main basic attack. So identifying it is key. Now, of course, the Bombardier Beetle also has a basic attack, and we can kind of go back to the Ladybug strategy here where we can move around, sidestep around the side of the Bombardier Beetle, just stay in close. But you do have to pay attention for that acid attack as it will almost always kill you if you stay in it too long. Now, it's important to point out that the Bombardier Beetle will give you access to important materials that will give you access to the tier two of weapons, armors, and tools. So you definitely want to go out and hunt these guys down when you feel comfortable because they will give you access to the next level of craftable items in the game. All right, so we've arrived at the point in the video which I think you were all waiting for, and that is talking about spiders. Spiders in the game are the apex predators, at least at this point, and they are no joke. But we're gonna start with the orb weaver spider, which I think is a little bit more manageable than the wolf spider. Now, of course, you're gonna need a good set of armor and a decent weapon to take on an orb weaver spider, but the truth is these guys are everywhere and they're actually quite simple to defeat if you employ some of the strategies we've talked about in this video. The main one being that you need to stay up in the spider's face. I highly recommend you switch to third person when fighting the Orb Weaver Spider because you just have a better sense of your surrounding. You're gonna know if there's anything in the way that you need to maneuver around and you're just gonna be able to attack the spider without getting overwhelmed with it being constantly in your face, rearing back. It uses psychology more than anything else to attack you. The Orb Weaver does have like a ranged projectile spider silk thing that will trap you, but it's really easy to avoid. And after that, all it has is a basic frontal attack. It rears back, you can easily perfect block it, but honestly, nine times out of 10, you're gonna be able to sidestep it if you stay close enough and just wail away until it dies. Or Weaver spiders don't have a ton of HP, so I definitely recommend something like an ant club. You will make short work of this spider, and if you follow the simple steps of blocking, moving around slowly, and just staying calm, this thing will be dead and you will be collecting its parts and building yourself your own set of spider gear. Now the wolf spider on the other hand, that is another story entirely. The wolf spider, even on mild difficulty, 
is incredibly challenging to kill, mainly because it has a combination of a basic frontal attack and this kind of weird jump attack. The Wolf Spider does a combination of rushing you and also jumping back so that you think you're out of range, but you're actually not. So using the strategy of staying up in its face while it's still important is really challenging. As far as I can tell, the Wolf Spider also has a better AI than most of the other insects in the game. Clearly, as the Apex Predator, they probably spent a lot of time developing this insect, so you are going to have to block, and most times the Wolf Spider will track you better than the Orb Weaver Spider or some of the other insects in the backyard. The key, honestly, is just to stay calm. You have to stay calm, because if you're freaked out by spiders, you're just going to forget all of the basics, like blocking and moving around to the side and things like that. Now again, stun is your best friend here. Ant Club, Mint Mallet, Spiky Sprig, doesn't matter. You want that stun to take hold because killing the Wolf Spider is a slog. It takes a hot minute, so using something that has stun gives you time to take a step back, take a breath. If you need to heal, you're gonna have a second to do that and regain that stamina. Now you can get away with using a bow or using a spear. It's just going to take forever and that means you're gonna have to be on point more often than you're not but using something with a stun effect is really going to give you that four or five seconds to kind of recoup, recollect your thoughts, and go on the offensive. Now, the Wolf Spider is the apex predator in the game. It is the hardest to kill, so if you're not at a point where you're ready to take it on yet, don't worry, farm some of the other stuff, practice on some of the other hostile insects in the backyard, and soon enough, you'll be ready for the Wolf Spider. Now, before we say goodbye, I wanna talk about fighting in groups. I think this is really the best strategy for success, so if you can team up with somebody, you're going to be successful more often than not. The simple strategy is just to slip into that holy trinity of tank healer DPS. Now, obviously there's no healer in the game, but you can tank and DPS an insect. One person gets aggro on it. They're now the defensive character focused on perfect blocking and making sure the insect isn't attacking the other person who's doing all of the DPS. Livid and I do this all the time and we are wildly successful killing insects without ever losing any health because one person is just focused on staying alive and the other other person is focused on killing whatever threat is in front of us. It's a great tip. I know not everybody always has people around that they can play with, but if you do have the opportunity, try it out because I think it's a really effective strategy for taking on anything, and I think it will be viable even as new insects come into the backyard. So there you have it, folks, my advanced combat tips for Grounded. Hopefully this short little guide helped you take on some of the insects that you've been struggling with in the game. If you want more Grounded Survival Guides in your feed, don't forget to like the video and of course, subscribe to Legion Gaming. You can also join us on Discord, over 5,000 members in our community, but we always have room for a few more friends, so check that link below and join up. My name is Kodiak, and on behalf of Livid and myself, thanks for watching and play on.